Hello YouTube, Dave here again. So I am back with a Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica video. Oh boy. Uh, well, I, again, uh, at the time that I'm recording this, it's actually, I still haven't actually looked at the book yet. Um, this is being recorded probably about three or four days before it actually uploads. So, you know, I haven't looked through it yet. I don't know how I feel about the actual book itself. But it's interesting to see what we have in this Maps and Miscellany pack. So this is a product that is similar, although probably not the exact same, as the Dungeon of the Mad Mage map pack that we had uh, for 5th uh, edition D&D. And I actually really like that product. I thought that, that was a really, really cool item. And I suspect that this is probably going to be something similar along those lines. So let's just take a look here at the, uh, the packaging itself. It's still in the wrapping. Uh, so this is you know, city maps and adventure sites for the world's greatest role-playing game. And then on the back, we have the same style uh, black and white um, map art, which is um, polarizing, I guess, to say the least. There are people that are really happy to see it. There are people that are really upset to see it. And then there are some people that are in the middle. I'm sort of in the middle. I've always thought that this style of maps would be really, really great for, like, if Wizards of the Coast, and this is something that I 100% think Wizards of the Coast should get back into doing, but if they were to release modules again, just like 32-page booklets with, you know, adventures in it that aren't tied to any, like, overarching storyline. You know, I mean, modules used to be the bread and butter of the D&D brand. You look at things like... Um, Keep on the Borderlands, Isle of Dread, Tomb of Horrors, Expedition to the Barrier Peaks, the Dragonlance Adventures, Ravenloft, uh, Ghost Tower of Inverness. There's just, a, you know, the, the game's history is filled with wonderful modules. And I think that that's something that 5th edition could really benefit from. The books and products are honestly kind of expensive, and to have an inexpensive source of adventures I think would be great and those modules were produced in black and white to begin with and I think that's where like these style of maps would really absolutely flourish in and um, I, it's something that I would again I would love to see I don't know if we ever will but I think that that's where this style of art would be the best received of like any kind that they would potentially uh, put out that's just you know my opinion at least so on the back here uh, in addition to the uh, in addition to the map so it says, you know, stand with your guild. Uh, this, ex uh, this accessory contains resources that dungeon masters can use to enhance the experience of running a campaign in the sprawling city of Ravnica, using Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, a separately sold Dungeons & Dragons campaign sourcebook. Contained within this durable folder are 20 cardstock sheets designed for use with dry erase markers, which is, which is cool, which is what we had with the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Uh, printed on these sheets are the following resources to help you run your Ravnica campaign. So seven double-sided color maps of Ravnica's 10th district with helpful reference information about each district. Seven double-sided single color maps of adventure sites associated with Ravnica's guilds with helpful reference information on each location. And two perforated sheets of color cards, 18 cards total. Uh, with character illustrations on one side and description of guild charms on the other. So that's kind of neat. Uh, so yeah. So there we go. So like I said, still wrapped in the cellophane. Uh, when I went to go pick this up, they only had two copies there. One copy had like the packaging, the cellophane at least, ripped like right off the back. This one has a little nick on it and it's been bothering me for the few days that I've had it in my possession. So let's just go ahead and uh, finally get this off of there and have a look at what we've got inside. Oh my, Let's see if we can get this off here. There we go. There we go. All right, so inside we've got uh, basically sort of like a table of contents, which is kind of cool for all the different uh, maps and stuff that are in here. I'm assuming that each side has uh, whatever maps are here or what's in here. So let's just go ahead and pull these out. So here we've got the 10th district overall. So like I said, Ravnica is this huge, basically the entire world is just one mega city, I guess. Uh, I'm not super up on my Magic the Gathering lore uh, when it comes to stuff like this, but I do know that Ravnica and its guilds were one of the, you know, most uh, popular 
uh, or, or among the more popular sets in Magic's history. And even to this day, the color combinations uh, that they use um, for like the, t the, the, the two color combos still bear the names of the guilds uh, from Ravnica. So like blue-green is Simic. Uh, blue red is is it and you know the stuff like that I think black green is Golgari if I recall correctly so anyway uh, so we got the uh, the map there and then on the other side oh uh, we actually have a little description which is kind of neat uh, so it goes over the six precincts of the uh, district 10 uh, major tradeways beneath the streets so some of the things that you may find in there so that's actually pretty cool uh, then we have precinct one and so the precincts Looks like they all have um, the uh, pertinent information on the other side. And this is actually, I think this is actually really, really cool. And uh, I will say I'm really impressed uh, by this. And this is something that may have been useful for, say, uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist to have information on the different uh, districts in that city. Uh, but here we have, you know, the basic information about the precinct, um, some, you know, locations of, uh, of import. Uh, law enforcement information here as well, and then we have um, like a list of the goods and services, and even just a random encounter table for people that you might run into uh, just walking on the streets, which I think is actually pretty neat. I like th that. And here we have again just the precinct itself uh, zoomed way in. So I mean, it looks nice. I I think you know again it would have been nice to have had maybe. Um, just numbers and on the back just have like a list of those locations and because that way you're, you're, you're obscuring details by having like stuff like this on here a lot of maps do this this isn't the only one that's ever been guilty of that but I still think that you know just a numbers or letters and then having the description on the back would have been a little bit better but it is still you know a nice uh, nice looking map so we got those let's just go ahead and those over and here we have district 2 oh. and it's got pretty much again the same thing so just on the front we have like the zoomed in look at it sort of an isometric view and the same information on the back you got your goods and services your random encounters um, which are not like meant to be common encounters just people that you might see so if they if your players ask you know where we look around do we see and like what do we see you know when we're looking down the street you can sort of do um, that stuff there, which is again pretty neat. We got Precinct 3, which is again pretty much the, uh, they're all going to be basically the same thing, so we're just going to have a quick look at the colored side. And then we got our backside information as well. Precinct 4. Oops. So Precinct 4. With the basic information there. Good old Precinct 5. And then we got the, the back there as well. And then we have Precinct number 6. And this is sort of the uh, the more industrial part of the uh, of the city, or at least this district of the of the city. So you got law enforcement on each of them. You got your people in the streets and some important locations here. All right, uh, so now we have looks like some maps that are um, along the same veins as like these are probably like guild halls or something along those lines. Uh, I don't know all of the symbols, uh, so let's just see. Yeah, they don't really say them here. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I believe. I believe this first one is Azorus. They're probably in alphabetical order at the very at the very least. So I think this is Azorus, which is like blue white. I think in in the Magic game. Um, so you kind of got that there. Then on the back. Oh, it actually has a description of it in there as well. Okay, actually. Oh, um, okay. This is actually kind of neat. So it does have some information here. So this is Arrestor Station. Uh, it would be nice if it did say, I'm pretty sure this is Azorus, the Azorus Guild. But uh, what's actually kind of cool is it's got a chart at the bottom here for adventure ideas. Just some things that you can do. So 
uh, if you're looking to just do something randomly, um, you could have like, you know, say stop someone before they can give information to the arresters or testify before a judge, protect a prisoner from assassins, get information from or to someone in the holding cells, uh, retrieve something held as evidence. So there's some really, you know, just a bunch of stuff that you could do and uh, I think that's cool. I like that. I actually really like that, having the uh, adventure ideas uh, on there. I think that that's really, really cool. And then this one, I believe is Boros. And I'm gonna stop guessing, I think, at this point. Because uh, I just have no idea. Uh, I'm not familiar with a lot of these symbols, so, you know, forgive me for that. Uh, but this Legion Garrison, and again, we got some stuff on the back as well. And we also have the adventure ideas there uh, as well. So again, some really, really cool stuff. And again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother trying to guess anymore. Uh, this is just labeled a safe house. Uh, and I'm sure that these probably are the same maps that you can find. Uh, I think there are maps for locations inside of the, the hardcover book itself. Uh, I, I recall flipping through and seeing a couple of them, and I'm pretty sure they're the same ones. But again, just really, really cool to have that information there as well. And then on this side, so let's just go ahead and just put this one back in. So we'll go through this one, these ones a little, a little quicker here. So we got this map here as well. And this is the Undercity Mansion. Again, it's sort of got that weird uh, glue stuff on it. That doesn't, I don't know if that, I don't know if that's gonna come off or not. Yeah, it feels like it'll just rub off. Um, but it's weird that this has it as well, because I don't know if it's just part of the lamination process that this stuff is getting left on, but I had some of this on my Dungeon of the Mad Mage maps as well. Uh, but this is an Undercity Mansion with, uh, again, some adventure ideas there. Here we have the Rumble Belt Encampment. Uh, hey, Gruel! So this one actually says uh, which one it is. So that's pretty cool. Up here, this this one I'm pretty sure is is it because that looks like um, the the dragon that leads that uh, Niv Mizzet I think is is the name. Anyway, um, some cool stuff here. Experimental workshop. Yo, yeah, in is it workshop? So I got that one right at least. Uh, bizarre magical effects chart, which is neat. And again, you got your adventure ideas, so some cool stuff. Grand Basilica. The Orzov Basilica. Not not as familiar with this one. But again, you got your adventure ideas, which is cool. Description of it. I think this one... Is this one Golgari? Or did I already go past Golgari? Rakdos, okay. Notorious Nightclub. Uh, so this is for Rakdos. I probably went past the Golgari one. Uh, so I, so I think these are... Anyway. Interesting stuff there. And then this one is the Verandi Center. Selesnia. So this is sort of a it looks like a nature-based one as well. We got our other maps. We got our chart. And then this one is this one is uh, Simic. Simic growth chamber. which is kind of cool. Again, Simic is one of my favorite combinations in the Magic the Gathering game. Not that it's powerful or anything, I just always liked it. Uh, so, you got the the chambers, then you got, the again, the adventure ideas, which a lot of them seem to be stopping or <laughs> experiments or learning about them. And then this one, uh, this is from uh, Krenko's Hideout. So, I think it's called Krenko's Way. Uh, I did see, looking through the table of contents, that Krenko's Way is sort of like a built-in adventure uh, to sort of get you started. And uh, I'll, I'll talk more about that uh, in the future, because, like, the adventure itself is fine, but there's stuff sort of surrounding the adventure 
that is a little bit disappointing. I'll, I'll talk about that later on. Uh, but here we got Krenko's hideout. Uh, so we got like the maps here. It was just basically like a warehouse. Um, so we got like the bottom, so you got like the, the, the warehouse itself here and then it's just sort of more zoomed out uh, on the back. And you got some information on the hideout itself. Uh, and then you have goblin gang possessions, so things that they might have on them. And then a goblin gang member stat block, so that's sort of interesting. And then we have our NPCs. So, we'll just sort of go through, and uh, so this is the front side here. And then on the back, that's right, so on the back it has information on the charms. So the Azorus charm, oh, I guess it can give us the symbols for everything here as well. Um, so which one was Golgari? Okay, that was the, the Golgari one. So, <laughs> uh, the only thing that I will say is, like, these are cool, this is cool artwork, sort of like a watercolor idea. Um, I like it, but it doesn't say who they are. Uh, so these may be just, if you want to use generic, um, if you want to create these NPCs, I think it would be kind of cool. But yeah, it doesn't actually tell you who they are. So if these are specific people, I am sorry that I don't recognize them. But anyway, we have our charms here. So like the Azorus charm, uh, when you activate it, you cast hold person as a uh, third level spell, uh, command or counter spell, and then the charm vanishes after you use it. And the Orzhov allows you to cast Bestow Curse or Fear. Uh, so interesting stuff here. So you got like the, the charm information on the back. The Simic Charm allows you to cast Enhance Ability, uh, Enlarge or Reduce, or Gaseous Form. So again, just some sort of neat stuff that we have here. And we got the NPCs on the on the frontier. You have like from the, the Loxodon, I think they're called, like the Elephant People. So yeah, I mean... It's pretty pretty cool stuff. Again, it would have been nice if they would have actually had like specific NPCs for this. But, you know, it is what it is, and these are, again, nice artworks, and you can use these for your own uh, sort of homebrewed characters if you wish to as well. So, anyway. So that is the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica Maps and Miscellany Pack. And honestly, I think this is actually a pretty cool product. And, um... You know, I, I really liked the map pack for Dungeon of the Mad Mage, but I actually really like this one just as much, if not even maybe a little bit more. So, the uh, the the Dungeon of the Mad Mage one was basically all just the dungeon maps, which, you know, it made sense for what it was. And the adventure was this massive dungeon crawl. But this one here has a little bit of stuff that you could do for adventure building, and world building beyond just referencing the specific maps themselves. Um, you know, you could use adventures that revolve around the specific guilds, and you could use the adventure ideas found on their, you know, the, the maps that are associated with them uh, to just sort of create a framework for something to do. Like if you just decide to pick up a game, you could have everyone uh, currently arrested by the Azorus Guild, and the, the premise of the adventure is for them to, like, get away, uh, maybe rescue one of their fellow, you know, like a contact that was uh, captured as well, and um, you know try to make their uh, try to make their way out. Maybe even gather some like steal back some evidence that was going to be used against them. So like you could use those those adventure charts to create you know some decent adventures um, with you know little li limit little or limited uh, you know prep time. So I think that's actually really really cool. Um, I like the fact that it has you know the map for the adventure that's included in the hardcover book as well as a little bit of information there. Uh, the the guild charms are again useful stuff to have uh, as well. Um, the NPC portraits are cool, but the fact that they're not really tied to anyone specifically, um, I think is a little bit of, of a downer. So it would have been nice to have had maybe just one page of like the, um, of the NPCs and on the back of the card have a little description about some specific ones. But at the same time, again, going to like a campaign building sort of idea, uh, it gives you some portraits to use and try to create characters around them. So I don't think it's an absolute missed opportunity. It would have been cool to have them tied to like specific people, but at the same time, they can also spark your imagination and try to create NPCs uh, around them. So overall, I think that this is a really, really good product, and especially if you're going to be running a Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica campaign, 
or I guess just a Ravnica campaign, um, I think that this is a really essential pickup. And, you know, the price isn't terrible. It's $24.95 uh, US or, you know, $33.95 Canadian is a little bit higher. Um, but at the same time, I think it's actually worth that price, in my opinion. I paid a little bit less than that when I got my copy, but I would have paid the full price and not been particularly bothered by it. It's the same thing I did for Dungeon of the Bad Mage, actually. I bought that one at full price and uh, I felt totally fine with it. So anyway, uh, uh, definitely, definitely a cool product. And uh, like these map packs are things that I really, really like. And, um, you know, I would love to see more of these things uh, come out in the future. Just maybe not two at the exact same time. But anyway, uh, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. And let me know in the comments below what you think of the maps inside. Um, and uh, again, you know, let me know what you think of the Ravnica setting yourself. If you've had an opportunity to run it. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm curious to hear what people think. So again, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Take care.